Yo guys, and welcome to beautiful Croydon, Pennsylvania. We got a will it run video today, actually a, a triple will it run. Uh, essentially a viewer of the channel reached out when he realized I was so local to this area and his girlfriend's gonna be moving back home out to uh, Indiana. She has three vehicles she wants to bring with her, a 1970 Monte Carlo, an 85 Monte Carlo and an 85 Corvette. Now these were owned by her husband who is uh, unfortunately no longer with us. So they're somewhat sentimental to her. She wants to get them uh, out to Indiana. Well, they need to brake, roll, and potentially run for her to get a, a decent uh, quote shipping them. But anyway, we're almost there. Just, uh, it's kind of the, the quick backstory. And here we are. And I just had a little conversation with her. The whole story is this yard actually got flooded. Uh, we got the 85 Corvette, and this unfortunately had water up into the, the car. It's manual trans, which is awesome. But that's a quick glance at that. And she said uh, she thinks the brakes and the clutch are locked up and a couple other things. But, you know, looking, looking pretty awesome. And then we've got the 85 Monte Carlo SS. And gotta jump in here to correct myself. Uh, this, you might notice the rear looks a little different. I've never actually seen one of these in person. It's an Aero Coupe model, and only 200 of them were made in 86 and 6,052 in 87. So, couldn't be an 85, but you'll notice that very distinctive rear sloping window, NASCAR themed. Actually a super cool looking car and kind of rare. Uh, I think these, these hold their value pretty good as well. I was reading only white was made in 86, so it's more than likely in 87, but beautiful car nonetheless. And then over in the garage, we have a 70 Monte Carlo. So, uh, this one, uh, her husband or late husband took all apart and rebuilt everything frame up on it. She said that it did last run roughly 10 years ago when he backed it into the garage because he had to get it out of his, his buddy's shop where he was doing the body work. I guess they were they were closing, she said. We got some hooker long tube headers on it. Chevy power. And yeah, I mean this, she said she just bolted this fender on too because uh, she's got like a ton of parts for these. Well, yeah, pretty much just kind of want to get these fired up and moving is the plan so she can get them shipped. Wow, parts galore up in here. Yeah, so we got some stainless steel all tigged together. Yeah, this thing is, this is in nice shape. Look at that. The trunk lid's not rotted out. This is definitely a very rust-free Monte Carlo compared to some of the other ones I've seen. Uh, now she, for uh, her career, is a commercial ice cream refrigeration expert. Uh, she does repair on all these different uh, machines and such. She actually hooked me up with some stainless steel too. I'll have to show you guys later. And this, all this equipment was her husband's Bridgeport. She's got that up on Marketplace. I mean, love to take that and put it in the shop but i don't i don't have any experience with these oh the arbor press though now that's i might see what she's doing with that this looks like a no-name one gotta love the old usa built man i can't imagine moving this whole place out to indiana and i mean the garage plus the house Whew. anyway let's uh get started here i, I guess we'll just start by firing up trying to fire up this Monte Carlo. She said I can go ahead and just pull my truck into the yard. I just love these little neighborhoods in Croydon. Uh, well, this guy's got a fire truck under his, his tent. You can put as many gates in as you want. Kind of do whatever you want around here. It's, uh, it's just great people. Yeah, I think i uh, just pull right in. He gave me a pile of keys. Said everything should be in here. It's last inspected 2018. I don't think it's going to be a problem. There you go. Ooh, maroon interior. Ah, oh, yes, this is a true SS too. Yeah, check out the gauge cluster. Wow, no mold smells, stinks at all. Got some 
hooker headers in the back. Oh man, new inbox. Ready to go on. Let's see what we got here. Nothing. Oh, to be expected. Pop this hood up. It didn't feel like it went. Gotta love the hood springs. Reliability. Mm, a little die hard. It's hooked up. We'll just throw a jump pack on it. And it's got a 5.0. Looks clean and original. Man, I would even take those factory heads headers off. Actually, they, they look so restrictive. This big log manifold that dumps straight down. I guess we'll check. Make sure there's like no mouse nest in here. Check a few fluids before we start it up. Um, she said she's. You could just drop batteries in them and try to start them. <laughs> Nice and fresh. You can hear the pumper going. Chokes engaged. Oil's about an inch over full, but clean. Let's drop the jump pack on, see what we got. few pumps, a few more than we need, and here we go. And there you have it, fired right up, no problems. You got charging voltage at 13, half tank of fuel, our oil is pegging here. Now that might be an issue and I don't know about this. The RPM is, is messed up because that's not 5500 there. I'm not sure what's going on with that. But. Whisper quiet too. Engine light on and the brake lights. Which probably just one of the wheel cylinders in the back or a rusted out brake line. Let's just see how much fluid's in it. I'm sure one side's empty. Yep, front's empty. A little low on the trans. It's on the stick though. Let's try to move this real quick. I think we'll pretty much be done with the Monte Carlo. Seems to be no problem. You know, I still got a, a brake pedal, enough to be able to get it on and off a car trailer. Drop her in gear. Yep. Windows. I probably shouldn't put the window down. <laughs> oh yeah, no problem. Oh, this thing's good to get loaded up. Let's just park it right here for now. Okay, on to the next one. Um, I'd love to buy one of these off of her. I like all three of these cars, but again, she's... Uh, Attached to them a little bit, which you know, I, I totally get it. So, oh, I guess, guess I'll put the window up though, huh? She told me to pop the trunk, take a look. Wow, that's, that's a heavy trunk. Those struts are blown out. Oh, look at that. That's some Turbo Series IMCO. Mufflers made in USA and some new piping. What's that two and a half inch? Yeah, full exhaust with the hooker headers back there. Nice. Well, that went smoothly. So it's on to vehicle number two, the 85 Corvette. Uh, she, I was just talking to her again and she said that water came up about halfway on the tires. And 
she's not sure when the last time it ran, but it did run. So let's. Oh, oh, red interior. Oh, red seats. Whew. Stinky though. Yeah, unfortunately, this probably didn't get uh, cleaned out after. You see, it's still super wet right here, too. The brake's not seized. Gas pedal's not seized, but yeah, the clutch she was saying is seized. And the cable. Well, if it's got a cable, I'm not sure what it has. That's seized up. Oh boy, this is uh, get down in here. Oh, you gotta love the, the seating position in these. I mean, it's his race car status for 85. This is just an incredible vehicle. Yeah, little storage compartment, some horns in there. Mm, cute oh, injectors. Yeah, I'm very spacious. I love these seats though. Look at this pad on here. Oof. Mm. Four plus three overdrive. Yeah, that doesn't that doesn't feel good. We got a. Uh, 112,000 miles. Wait, let's see that first digit. Oh, I can't wait to see this display light up. All right, let's see if we got the right key for this one. Well, if I ain't lucky, or unless she's got like 10. Yeah, there's a bunch of ignition keys. Okay, I'm dead, obviously. I apologize if this video is dragging on or not action packed so far. I, I Kind of worn out honestly i was digging uh, trenches all day and doing drainage around the garage the gutters and drains so it's uh it's pretty late too now it's like we're uh, almost eight o'clock but you know middle of summer so plenty of daylight um this is this is quality time you know this is how we enjoy ourselves look at the overhead i mean even the, the grand torino my head is hitting and this thing i still got plenty and i'm six foot three. Oh, that's plastic how about that I like it. Oh, it's my hat. It's got salt stains all over it from sweating today. <laughs> Terrible. Yeah, let's pop this hood up. I think. I know the drill. Well, you've had this up a bunch? Uh, anytime he would open it, I would have to. Pull, pull the handle too. Pull the handle, yep. Oh. There we go. There it goes. Yep. That thing's a beast. I know. <laughs> oh, yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Tuned port injection. I see a March 2020 battery in it. And the steel lugs, bolts on the battery. No, we shouldn't be in bad shape on this one either. I mean, fuel injected, fire right up. I guess I'll just check the oil and then throw the jump pack on it. Got fluid in both the both sides on the master. I got plastic uh, casing on that vacuum canister, huh? Hmm, that's not good. See what I see? It's over full and milky on the bottom. That means water got into the engine more than likely. I don't see any rust or milk up top. It's got yellow injectors in it, so those other ones in the car must have been the original. Coolant's not anywhere up top i love this design where you just you can lock it out so if the wind grabs the hood it's not gonna rip off chevrolet gm assembly division bowling green kentucky i gotta say these do have a very beautiful sexy rear end on them possibly my favorite and all the corvettes let's see what it does when i put power to it
We got interior lights. Push. Oh man, that's awesome. So when you're cruising around, got a little interior light. On and off. Yes. I just heard the fuel pump come on too. Look at those gauges. That is beautiful. I mean, you couldn't, like the engineers in the 80s. I mean, that is just so stylish. Look at the tachometer on it. I've never been one of these. So this is, this looks like, <laughs> All right, well, I'm not gonna crank this because I just wanted to see if it got power. I guess, let me let me just blip the starter to see. Well, we gotta press the, no, no, we don't have to press the clutch. Okay, starter, engages. I can't tell if it's locked up engine or not. I'm not gonna, oh geez, I guess let's just, let's just see. As long as you don't pick up that water in the oil pump, I, I assume there's water, here we go. No, engine's locked up. You guys heard that. All right, well, that being said, we are gonna move on to the 70 Monte Carlo uh, because, well, she has to have these out of here. I forget what it was. It's like a, a couple weeks or something. She, this property's already sold. And we'll see if this rolls today. Uh, but as far as running it, that's gonna be a more involved project. So well, let's, let's move on to the 70. See what's up with that. Oh. Yeah, cables got hot too, just from, from hitting that starter a little bit. So, starter drew a lot of current and motors locked up tight. Uh, but, you know, that doesn't mean you can pull the plugs, lube them, get all the water out. Probably be okay. These technically don't have to run though. They just have to roll and stop and steer. That's it. They don't have to run. We're moving right along. You guys know what that is? I don't know. She was kind of telling me there's little flappers that go inside of it for, for like stirring and slurrying ice cream. This is stainless steel though. Food grade stainless steel. Wait till you guys see all the stuff she hooked me up with. Uh, she was actually going to scrap. Like this is getting scrapped, which is crazy to think about. I mean, imagine how much that would cost to fabricate just materials alone. Uh, but luckily I saved some of the, the stuff. I'll show you guys later. Hmm, so where to start? Where to start? We got coolant down there, about six inches down. You know, it's that super exciting fluid checks. Yeah, oil in the power steering. Don't really care about the master. We already checked the oil. Battery missing. Cables here though. Yeah, I'm mechanical pump I mean just I think we're good to go uh, fuel lines are all hooked up and stuff I did notice some mice droppings down on the intake and some corrosion there this is uh, I guess it's the 396 turbo jet 330 horsepower Dizzy's all hooked up he's really in Against the headers, man, that plug wire is actually rubbing the steering shaft too. Oh, there we go. A glance at the interior, by the way. Same cluster as we got in the Chevelle, and there is a future video coming on that. As soon as we get the, the garage kind of squared away, we're in neutral on the shifter. Uh, and he's got some mufflers back there camshaft bunch of parts and I think up on the roof is a hood yeah that has got a cow induction hood in there by Harwood I thought that was inspection for a second it's actually Green River Community College parking permit 1995 hmm got nothing there's some other wires here too, though. What this is. I'm gonna get this red one. There we go. Sounds good. Now we need some fuel. She said it did run when it was pulled in. And yes, the gas tank is there. Look how rust free this is. For a Pennsylvania car? I mean, geez. Oh, it's gonna be a loud one. I got open headers up front there. Open long tubes. 
Smell. Smell a whole bit of gas back here. Got a Holly four barrel on it. Plastic fuel filter up here. Yep, that's bone dry. All right, we got fuel to the carb. Used the stainless steel fire extinguisher, which has fuel in it. Pressurized it to four and a half PSI for now. With the JF Eggwell, do have a real fire extinguisher too. And yeah, I just hit the pumper a few times. I can see it shooting out. I have this uh, fuel filter going over to a, a jug and see what comes out of the tank. If it starts, I think it will. Let's uh, check a couple other things and then crank it. Here goes nothing. All right. <laughs> You, uh, would you mind turning the key real quick so I can work the carburetor? You, you got good neighbors or what? <laughs> it's gonna be loud. Well. All right. All right, ready? Yes, I, I don't know if the key was uh, sticking too, so if you feel like the starter's sticking, just you know, bring, bring it back. We got it. Get ready? Yeah, I think the timing might be off some. I can see uh, the fuel pump started chug a lug in too. Plenty of gas came out of the tank. So we can take a look at that. Um, I'm sure, you know, they'll move on its own power onto the trailer. It's just, it's gonna, the whole neighborhood's gonna be like, <laughs> the cops probably already got called. That thing is loud. Is oh loud. my She's gosh. A beast. When it's popping like that. <laughs> She's a beast. Woo. So my first thought with that loud popping was uh, maybe timing just so far out or loose distributor or something. Uh, but then I was actually checking the firing order and sure enough, that's all sorts of whacked out. I don't know who put them on, but there's, I, I tried redoing it based on the, this being number one and they don't have that right either. So I'm gonna have to re recheck that because that's certainly what's going on. Otherwise, you know, it sounds super healthy, fired right up. And she's actually gonna go talk to, uh, her guy out in Indiana about the Corvette, because uh, again, that's that's gonna need some work. I said I'd pretty much come over tonight, throw a battery on these, uh, see see what we're looking looking like. You know, for her moving these out of here, I, I told her I'll, I'll just come over with the tow truck and assist when the when she gets a driver lined up to take these three vehicles out to Indiana because I, I don't think it's worth it trying to drive them on the trailer, especially with the open headers and everything else. Uh, she did hook me up with some donuts. Check that out. This is her business, Ice Cream Repair and Service, LLC. Uh, you gave us a couple flashlights, me and Jen. That's awesome. And these are from the Bristol Amish market. Check them out. They look like the best donuts I've ever seen. She just said there's one like bacon maple or something. Oh yeah, look, it's got bacon on the donut. But I'm gonna head back home now and I'll show you tomorrow the other stuff that she hooked me up with. Got a surprise for you, baby. Oh, hi. How are you making out on this boat? Making out. Whoa. You did the seats. Oh my God, I can't believe they came back to life. Got a little surprise for you from Chris. The girl with the, with the three cars. She got you a little flashlight with uh, her company name on it. A little LED light. And then Ooh. some donuts from the Bristol Amish market. Look, this one's got bacon on it. Wow. Give it a try. Let's see what you think. Which one? I, I want to try a bite of that bacon one. What is that? What do we got here? Oh, oh. It's chocolate, though. Hold on. Hold him back. Stay back. Stay back. Hey. All right, guys. You get the first piece of bacon. Set. Set. Stay, stay, stay. Okay, good boy. Oh yeah, how's that bacon? This Go is ahead. from Chris, thank yeah. you so much. Bristol Amish market. Delicious? Mm-hmm. 
Gus, you got your bite. We're next day here, and I wanted to show you some of the stuff that Chris from Croydon hooked me up with. We got uh, some of these conduit little elbows, Loctite, nickel anises, a deburring system. This is, uh, so this is for deburring sheet metal. It's got these little rollers here. I think you kind of just drag that along an edge to, uh, to deburr. You got Romex connectors, which these look like they could be used for MC cable too. Real nice quality. Some other electric electric stuff. These are like, I guess, for putting cable into a box. And a 100 amp Siemens panel, which is awesome because I was gonna just reuse my existing 50 amp panel, but we could use this 100 amp and that way have plenty more slots. Uh, it's only got eight gauge going to the garage, so, so 40 amp breaker down in the, the the basement box but i don't see a reason why you can't put a 100 amp panel as long as it's on a 40 amp breaker in the basement and maybe i can swap this 100 amp out for a, a 40 amp too so that's all that and then she gave me a uh, a tri stand by rigid this can hold eighth to five inch pipe really nice piece she it was kind of just a spare one she had you can also bend pipe on it right here in those three rows and look at this so complicated No, no, you know, that like, dirt taste. Did I get dirt? Yeah. So, yeah, that'll go in a shed full of stuff. And we will use it one day. For holding pipes. The coolest thing I got from her is all this stainless steel. She was getting ready to scrap it because she, she just has so much and it doesn't make sense to travel with it all the way out to Indiana. I got this thick wall, stainless pipe. These guys, I mean, look at this. You could store this outdoors. Like this is not aluminum. This is food grade stainless steel. I got stainless threaded rod, whole bunch of stuff. Uh, one of these, so she really, really hooked it up. And it's great to, to have this stuff instead of going to get, what do, you, what do you get, 40 cents a pound for uh, for stainless? So we'll put that to good use in the future. Just out here today, kind of finishing up the drainage for the garage, got the gutters going into this little French drain. I have holes drilled in the pipe, and then these little uh, T's every, was it like 55 inches, probably overkill, but I'm gonna bring the, the grade up a little bit and probably do stone. Runs all the way down to the end, to the, the basin, and then it's gonna go out the back. And fast forward a few days, here's what we ended up with, brought that stone up, did get a downpour the other day, and this system works perfectly. Also, we got the conduit ran up for the generator cables and such. Decided to not bury that, leave it exposed. And yeah, I mean, it downpoured and all these rains worked so perfect. I'm a big fan of surface drains over like a French drain with just stones down there. Those always get clogged up. I got some grass seed down and I suppose this has turned into more of like an update video on the garage build. Uh, I just text Chris now to, to ask her when she's got uh, somebody set up to, to pick those cars up so I can get over with the tow truck and help her out. I'm still trying to get her to sell me that Corvette since she said she's not too attached to that one and it'd be a fun video getting the engine unlocked and see if it works. It's got a, a cool transmission and it's like a, a Doug Nash 4 plus 3. Uh, so in two, I think it's two, three, and four, it has electronically actuated overdrive or whatever. Behind me over here, I'm just noticing this must be the Buddha picture that my neighbor wanted me to hang on the back of the garage. I have the, the best neighbors ever. I lo love them so much. Uh, so yeah, I'll ask him where he wants me to put that. For now, I'll just leave it right there. Jumping around like always. So wrapping up the update, uh, got some free pavers and did this terrible looking paver setup but you'll notice the new pavement uh, this has got a nice base layer and then uh, two layers of two inch lots of asphalt here really happy with it it's uh, super straight and right up here it used to lean real hard with the old garage that's all nice and level no lip everything rolls right into the garage uh, in here my buddy Adam came over the other day thank you very much Adam for your help getting the panel all wired up he put a junction box in so we were able to extend the wires and you guys remember this setup from an old video i was able to use that 100 amp panel we just uh, put a 40 in back fed it through this so this is the main now got rid of the original there's the generator cables coming in and such lots more to do with the wiring but at least we have power in here now and then uh, put an exhaust fan in yesterday 
probably put that on a switch over by the door it's 24 inch exhaust fan off amazon great little unit and this garage door when they put it in uh i, I told them to put it as high as he possibly could and it really it's just not going to be good with a lift because we got exactly 12 feet to the trusses and um anyway so i spent a few hours the other day i got like eight inches higher in the back and about seven inches higher i still have to extend the rails i'm gonna put a mini split in this week got spray foam insulation coming on thursday and then I can roll all of my toolboxes and gear back in here and get things organized. A lot of people were asking if I'm gonna coat the floor. No, definitely not, just gonna leave it how it is. Maybe dump some paint and oil on it so I don't need, it's like, just let it go, it's totally fine. You put epoxy coatings and then if you're welding, the splatter will stick into it and then it ends up rusting, looking like junk or getting all bumpy. Also, it gets scratched up as you drag things across and then, oil spills and you can't recode it so I'm, I'm a big fan of just leaving concrete floors completely the way they are and uh you know let nature or let work do its thing so it's been a lot of gab in this video and not a lot of wrenching but hopefully you found those three vehicles interesting they're all just beautiful examples of classic cars and that aero coupe and the corvettes somewhat rare the aero coupe especially i didn't even know it was an aero coupe when i was looking at it. i was like well what's up with this rear glass i i'd never seen one i had to look them up i well, appreciate you guys tuning in if you did at the end of this video i'm going to plug some clips that i had for my cell phone of the power tour just random stuff and otherwise i uh, will see you guys hopefully in another video very soon got a, another boat revival coming up uh, one i started recording like geez a couple months ago this garage thing has just been really uh, take it, it drives me crazy when all my stuff is mixed up back there in, in storage i have kind of already went over this a few times before so see you guys soon thanks for watching no nonsense no how hey gus did mommy give you a wet blanket? Keep you nice and cool. We made it. We made it. To Bristol, to Torino. Looks like storms may be rolling in. The Gus man, staying cool in the heat. He looks like he's ready for a nap. I went back to take the Meepo for a cruise around the track. And I don't know if it's allowed or not, but I'm gonna go ahead and do that anyway, because it looks awesome. Oh, look at the bank on here. Yeah, this is kind of a dream of mine to skateboard around a NASCAR track. Woo! Power. <laughs> oh, it's kind of awkward on this turn, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> on the skateboard, but wind pushing y'all around. Oh, this is amazing. Up to this little uh, bowling alley, mini bowling alley. Oh, look, we got lights now. That's a curveball. We are posted up down on the Doe River in Elizabethton, as we call it, but it's actually said Elizabethton. Bluegrass going on behind us. <laughs> yeah, they got a little bluegrass festival in the park. The Covered Bridge Bluegrass Jamboree, I think it was called. Just fired up the grill and uh, throw some steaks on. Should be nice. And you said there's a, there's a car show in town too, we're gonna go. a car show. I went on a scooter ride to the Dollar General to get us some lighter fluid. That's one thing I forgot. And uh, I stumbled upon a car show. Alrighty. What do you think, Gus? You ready for the car show later? 
Oh, he says, what's this? Is this for me? <laughs> also got that at the Dollar General for the little guy. You got some dollar store food, buddy. Got some good steaks on there. You think you dollar store food, buddy? Oh yeah, that's good stuff. That's good stuff, huh? Meaty delicious. Are we playing uh, Annie, right? That's all? Yeah, it's so far away, otherwise I'd harmonize. What a fun little cruise night this was. You guys notice anything? Look down that way and pan over at the ground, at the street, up this way. There is no trash on the ground. And they didn't have to run a street sweep. I mean, you, you go to the vet in Philly, every time there's just trash everywhere. People, people, okay, all right. I'm sorry, if we look closer, there's a little bit of trash. But, you know, it's just great to see people uh, taking care of their, their town here. This little bugger sits in the sun for too long, starts cooking. Guys, you hot? <sighs> you guys missed the face before. He just gets his face like, uh, I'll just lay here and die. There you guys. It is. <sighs> It'll cool down in no time with this wet rag. Right, buddy? Yeah. Hey, Gus. Are you better? Cool down now? He's good. Gus is not liking the cable bridge. Stop down here in Buchanan. And he's like, I don't know, it just feels like it's moving a little bit. <laughs> Keeps getting down to this, this squatted position. Pop quiz for you guys. We got a synchronous motor right here. It's, uh, what's that, about four feet tall? So any guesses on its horsepower? Drop it down in the comments right now, because I'm about to tell you. Uh, press pause. Uh, I will give you a hint. It is a 440 volt. And I only know this because of this information here. It's made by Electric Machinery Manufacturing Company in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Of course, you guys can't read the plaque here. But all right, so it is a hundred horsepower. Look at that. That old hundred horsepower motor. Pretty cool. And that's it. Uh, 60. The cycles are 60. 110 amps. 440 volts. Pretty cool. Dalton's name all over that one. Soft top. There's a the food court. Oh, you weren't kidding. This yeah. is an old model? Yep. Yeah, that they turned into a classic car. Huh. Wow. Sales place. It's the GTO hub. Uh, I wouldn't say that. Oh, here's an AMX. Love it. Look at all the oil spills and fluid spills. <laughs> yeah, all old cars leak. Hundred and twelve K. Ugh, automatic. Why? Mm -hmm. 